So just to start off for the recording for Ruth, this is kind of a 2022 analysis of all her practitioners and her healing journey and progress that she's made. So um, we're going to go ahead and have Jill start. Okay. So just a little background. Um, I'm working with Ruth for about four years. I saw her in Aspen for about three and the last year uh, we've been working online because I moved to Chicago for my daughter's schooling. But um, it's been great working online because it's like she's just right across from me on the iPad. So it's worked out really great. Um, also, I just wanted to remind everyone her accident was actually back um, in 2012. So it's been 11 years and she did have three years without any speech at all. And she's really had to relearn her language step by step. It's been um, also processing language, reading language, written language. It's been a very tedious process for Ruth to learn all nouns, verbs. You can imagine when do you use is, when do you use are, when do you use he versus she. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Um, she's consistently made very good progress despite being this far out from her accident. Uh, but I have noticed since June, because I've looked at my notes, that she's been making more impressive improvements than she had been making. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure if everything's finally coming together now that we've worked on so many different areas or if it's supplements that's helping her brain or if it's Sam's, uh, the new addition, what he's been doing or whoever else, whatever else they've been contributing. But whatever the case, um, I am seeing much more um, improvement than I had been seeing the previous three and a half years. And they're specifically in three areas that I want to share about the progress that I'm seeing. One area is word retrieval. So being able to come up with the words she wants to say, specifically names of people, of specific places like Whole Foods, or specific things like cinnamon, okay? Um, Ted will tell you this has been her most challenging area, especially to come up with people's names. Um, but like I worked with her this morning, she was able to tell me all five names of the people that were gonna be at the meeting today. Um, and she's just using not just harder, you know, the words to retrieve, but she's also using more challenging words. So I'll hear her say words like, you know, lug, or expert or tweak, you know, I never used to hear words like that come out of Ruth. It was more basic, simple language. Um, so that's really been impressive. Also being able to say like Saturday, buttermilk, you know, even the day of the week and, and specifically uh, buttermilk, really great. She's been working on a lot of strategies to work on her word retrieval. And there's a few that I'm really seeing her use more, which is helping her retrieve the word, such as she'll try to say the first letter. So she'll say H, Highlands, you know, that helps her remember the word Highlands. Or she was telling me about skiing and she went like this and she went, and I knew right away she was trying to say chairlift, but she couldn't think of the word. So our goal, of course, is communication. So I don't care if she's gesturing, um, you know, whatever. We just want the flow of conversation and communication with others. Um, so besides the word retrieval and using more complex words, I'm also seeing her use more complete sentences. She's starting to use the smaller words of language like it and to and with. Uh, I was not seeing that at all before. It was very Morse code, just the very basic, you know, Ted, bike, yesterday kind of thing. So now she's actually filling in more complete sentences. And what she's been working on now is asking questions. So I wanted to share with everyone, um, and this is more complex than you would just think, I'm just going to ask what's new. It's trying to remember what WH word to come up with. And we're starting small and expanding. We've just started on two, for example, and we've been building. Um, but if you could encourage her to use her questions, um, that would be great. Because um, that's what she's currently working on right now. Okay. And she accidentally called me before Christmas. 
she was meaning to call someone else. And she said, do you want concert? And that was the first time I've heard her ask a do question. So, so this is really great. So this is all new for Ruth. Um, and then let's see what else. So um, all these improvements, the third area I wanted to share. So the first is the word retrieval. The second is using more complete sentences and questions. And then the last one is being able to um, just share a story, a sequence story about something that has happened in her life. I'm seeing real improvement with that, that I can actually follow her story, that she's saying enough language and coming up with enough words that um, it's really great that I can now have a true conversation with her. And I think that's been very empowering for her. So um, I know we're short on time, so I'm just gonna wrap it up by saying moving forward, we're gonna continue to work on the word retrieval and asking questions and we're introducing written language. And if, if you all could help with some of those areas, encourage the questions and encourage the word retrieval, the use of gestures and what does it start with if she can't think of the word that will help her um, or have her describe it or do a fill in the blank. That's another one that really helps her. She can't think of pepper, say salt and, and then she can usually come up with that. So anyway, that's a summary of her language work. Great. Okay, um, Hillary, do you feel comfortable going or would you rather have somebody else go? There we go. Sorry, I muted myself because I have a puppy in the office and he was like running around and moving things and I didn't want everyone to be interrupted, but I, I'm happy to share. So, um, and Ruth was just here, but the puppy wasn't here, so she missed him, but next time. Uh, so we have been working um, both with supplements for brain function as well as physical body work, mostly using cranial sacral, as well as some adjustments like chiropractic style adjustments to help with blood flow um, as far as to the brain and also specifically with uh, the alignment of the sutures of the skull. That's what the cranial sacral does and it allows for more flow of cerebral spinal fluid and which can of course positively impact brain injury. So I do feel like the supplements that we've been using since she started taking them, so this, we've been seeing each other for about a year. Uh, I have, I can't say that like we've had extreme growth in that, like so that throughout that whole time, but I do think that she's improved over the last year with verbal skills. Um, and, and just from what I'm hearing from Ruth, from Jill, so, to me, I feel like we're moving in the right direction. It's slow, but I think it's improvement. So that would be more or less to sum up what I feel like we're doing. We we usually meet about once a month and we work, uh, we check in regarding what she's taking. I haven't been changing things very much. When we first started using supplementation, uh, things were bothering her like in different ways. It affected her sleep. Uh, it, I'm trying to remember all the different areas that were impacted by the supplementation that we were using. And so we've finally come up with through trial and error, where I feel like we're consistently actually supporting her brain and yet not overdoing anything where we have, we're having a negative impact. Would you agree with that, Ruth? Yes. Thank you. So, so I have not really changed much. The last visit when she was here, I did give her another homeopathic remedy to try to help improve brain function. They're usually pretty subtle and gentle. But other than that, uh, I don't really want to change much about her supplementation just because there were a lot of ups and downs. There, were, We definitely had, and Ted probably would agree with this, had a lot of texts like, I don't feel well, I'm not sleeping as well, things like that. And so I feel like now we're at a really happy place as far as supplements go. So I don't want to do too much there. And then we can continue doing body work and maybe occasional homeopathics. And if we do need to make some changes supplementally, then we can do that as needed. So. I think that's everything. Okay, great. Um, how often does she see you, Hillary? 
About once a month. Would you say that's accurate, Ruth? I think that's about right. So, I mean, and she could come in more if she wanted to, but probably once a month is great. I feel like every time I do cranial on her, um, things have improved, like they're staying, they're lasting. She still has a really nice relaxing experience, usually falls asleep on the table, at least for part of it. Um, but there's less dramatic shift just because there it doesn't need to be as dramatic if that makes any sense. Uh, this past visit, there was definitely, um, she had some subluxations in her cervical spine and we adjusted her cer uh, her cervical spine. And I think that actually helped a lot because when that's off, that really does affect blood flow into the brain. Uh, other than that, that's really what we did. And, it, and her brain felt really good to me. Like it felt like the cerebral spinal fluid was moving the way we, were, we would hope. Great. Okay, awesome. Um, Mac, would you like to go next? Absolutely. And uh, um, Jill, I, I totally agree with you about the, the conversation. Um, we, we start off each of our sessions with just a little bit of just a little bit of conversation just to see where we are that day. And, uh, and I definitely noticed a huge uh, growth in, in her uh, retrieving the words that she used choose it that, that she's really wanting to use. And uh, so I think it's it's been wonderful. Uh, so I, I am a music therapist. We work with music. Um, and I feel I'm, I feel like we've been to working together for quite a long time. Um, but I'm not sure what year it was, but uh, um, it's been wonderful all the way around. Uh, we um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Three or four, Ted. With three or four, I thought it was even more than that. Maybe, maybe it was the, okay. something like that. Um, so what we've been focusing on is, uh, and and Hillary, I hope to to have a great conversation with you someday because I'm very brain oriented, and uh, with music, um, just try and find ways to to increase the neuronal activity and and uh, and and have music be that that aspect. Uh, so we start off with a little bit of conversation. And then we do some vocal warm ups and sing some scales and her uh, her range um, is is very solid, but the the nice thing is the quality of her voice is, has improved which not improved but just has grown um, and uh, and it's a very nice very nice vocal quality so I, I love. Uh, uh, I love hearing her sing and, and watching her while she's singing because it gives her seems appears to give her a lot of enjoyment so that's uh, that's nice. Um, as far as the, the, the other parts of the music go, we, um, oh, and when we're doing the scales, uh, the, one of the main positives that I've noticed is that I'm able to sing longer phrases that she can repeat back where it used to be, uh, I would have to break them up and, uh, and now she's, she's doing longer, more complex phraser, phrases, uh, so that's, that's always a, uh, a plus to see. Um, and then as far as the piano goes, we, we, we've started, you didn't really play piano before we started working together. So now you're, I mean, she's, uh, you, you should hear her sometime. We gotta, we, we gotta have her give a little recital for you guys. Um, but uh, she's playing pretty complex pieces um, that uh, are maybe the, the sheet music is like five, six pages long. And, uh, and where it used to be uh, the, the, uh, the difference between looking at the music, looking down, coming back up and finding your place uh, used to, to be a, a little bit of a struggle, uh, is not a struggle anymore. She's, she's either uh, memorizing certain um, amounts of the notes or she's, uh, I think she, I wanted to point out, she seems to have a very strong uh, fine motor spatial uh, aspect of where her hands are on the keyboard and, um, so there's a, it's a combination, I guess, of, of uh, a little more memory work uh, in, in knowing where she is in the music and the spatial comfort uh, with her with her hands on the keyboard. Uh, so she's she's doing a lot uh, very strong with that, and uh, and it's always fun. I just I like hearing her play, and uh, and we've increased the difficulty of the songs. We're doing songs that that have lyrics, and sometimes that still can be difficult with uh, the singing, not, not necessarily the singing with the playing, 
but more of the recognition of the words that she's saying. Because a lot of times in songs, uh, the, the, maybe the phrases aren't quite as complete or they, they're uh, altered just a, a little bit to, to fit the music. And sometimes it, they just don't make sense. And so we, we clarify that. But, um, and, and if, if she's struggling singing while she's playing, then we break it down into smaller steps and just play it without singing. And then, uh, and then come back and add the, the singing in again a little later. And, uh, and, and it's, it's always nice to see uh, improvements when, she, when she's hitting it on the money and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. But yeah, she's been challenging herself and, um, and I think uh, the quality of the, uh, the, the music uh, has definitely increased and, uh, and along with the, the difficulty of the, the music. That's awesome. I remember when she was having such a struggle with being frustrated um, trying to see between the notes and the piano and it it really just changed like that, huh? That's so amazing. <laughs> Good job, Ruth. Um, okay, Sam, I think you should go next. Sounds good to me. Uh, I'm Sam, everybody. I took over from Patty um, Bennett. So what I do uh, is called muscle activation techniques or MAT. Um, any effect that I'm having on anything to do with Ruth's nervous system and her recovery is uh, a little bit more of an indirect effect, I think would be an accurate statement. Um, so what I do with MAT is allow the body to more efficiently uh, recruit and contract muscles and it kind of uh, solidifies, reestablishes and makes more efficient the communication between the nervous system and the muscular system. And the part that affects the nervous system is actually the efficiency of the communication from the muscular system back into the nervous system. So uh, while traumatic brain injuries and things of that sort are not necessarily what uh, a lot of people come to me for, it's something that I've had a lot of people with over the years and it has gotten noticeably better. The idea being um, if the nervous system is inefficient at recruiting a group of muscles to perform some kind of movement. Um, and it takes twice as much input from the nervous system as may be required to elicit that contraction to perform the movement before we work. And then when we get the muscles to work more efficiently, and that takes half as much nervous system input to elicit the same output. Now there's more bandwidth available for other stuff, whatever that might be, speech or, um, being able to come up with the words, being able to put the words into more of a complete sentence, being able to ask the questions that were uh, indicated, things like that. So um, I've definitely noticed drastic changes from the beginning to the end of a session. Um, like we'll start off a session and Ruth will be telling me how her week was because I see her once a week for an hour and a half, typically, um, in kind of more of a fragmented manner. And then we'll work on a bunch of different things in different parts of her body, depending on what I see fit. And then we'll finish up the session and she'll be speaking in complete sentences using three or four syllable words, just kind of without seeming like she's needing to try to do it, which is a cool thing. Uh, we started working on her neck a little while ago, uh, probably back in October or so, um, something like that. And uh, the next day I got an email from Ruth saying my brain is so much better um, that I don't know, I, I'm not as in tune with the whole history of everything because I'm relatively new. I just moved here at the beginning of July. Um, so some of the other improvements that you guys have been seeing may coincide with some of that. Um, but from what my understanding was from Patty, who was working with her before, with you guys know Patty, um, she does tend to use lots of words um, and he talks quite a bit. So I'm going to try and recall on that uh, correctly. But I was under it was my understanding that like writing emails and writing text messages and stuff like that wasn't really a thing that Ruth was doing very much of. Uh, it was difficult to read things and see things and and perform those tasks. But then to write an email to me afterwards, I was like, OK, that's probably a pretty important area of the body for her then. Um, so she was doing MAT with Patty for quite a while. I'm not entirely clear on exactly how long, um, but I do MAT, but I also have a kind of more updated, upgraded version of MAT because I've been going to the classes and everything. So there's a specific version of it that we do in which I actually intentionally flip all the muscles off on purpose first, and then I get them going again, and then I flip them off again and on again, and I can up the tolerance of how much stress and force those muscles can tolerate and still maintain their efficient contractile abilities and communication abilities. Um, so in introducing that in July, that might have been part of some of the uh, more progress that we've seen recently. I'm obviously not, maybe not obviously, I'm not 
measuring the things and paying as much attention to stuff in as fine of a detail as the rest of you are. I'm focused more on physically, what are we dealing with? Uh, is there anything that's bugging you pain-wise that we can we can help out with? And a lot of times those areas of the body hurt because there are certain groups of muscles that aren't firing as efficiently as they should be. So other muscles have to over fire to compensate for it and work too hard. So in kind of balancing the system a little bit more, um, it leaves the nervous system with a little bit less to worry about from a muscular perspective. And it kind of cleans up the feedback coming in from a sensory perspective and makes the motor output more efficient so that there's some more bandwidth for other stuff. So like the guy that founded MAT, Greg, suffered a pretty awful, almost death car accident like four or five years ago and was doing lots of biofeedback kind of nervous system work with uh, the people he was supposed to. And one time he came in and his like theta wave activity was like five times what it had been uh, previous to when they were doing all their work. And the only thing that he had done was he was physically able to handle laying on the table and, and getting worked on for an hour and a half. So now he's got a team of in-house like neuro uh, neurophysiologists and stuff that he works with uh, TBI people on in that specific respect with this kind of more upgraded version of MAT that we work on, where we work on muscles kind of in the order in which they're laid down during development. So there's kind of this neuromuscular hierarchy that exists in certain groups of muscles that are laid down first, second, third, fourth, um, kind of like a language the nervous system speaks. So we bring some organization back to that, which makes things more efficient at what they're supposed to do, which then lets everything else kind of, uh, you know, it has just, like I said, more bandwidth for other things. So kind of what I do is more of an indirect effect, but an uh, effect nonetheless. And I've seen pretty big changes from beginning of session to end of session and over the course of time and everything. And, you know, Ruth will throw out a five syllable word and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. That's that's a longer word than we've used uh, previously. And I'm not tracking things or whatever, but I, I am noticing lots of things. So um, it's a testament to all of the work that everybody's been doing with her for such a long time. But above all, I'd like to acknowledge that it's a testament to the uh, amount of effort and time that Ruth puts in herself, because without her, none of it would be possible. So that's what I got for you guys. Thank you. Um, okay, I guess I'm blessed on the alphabetizing thing. I am going on working with Ruth my fourth year, and uh, we work on a combination of things. I am a yoga instructor, personal trainer. I have an Ayurveda practitioner certification, as well as um, have quite a bit of training with neuroplasticity. So what I do with Ruth is... Um, we kind of work out every week. And while we're working out, we really try to make a mind body connection. So we're talking as we work out to have her focus on certain muscles and letting them go. I'm not an expert at it, but I'm really trying to focus on where she's compensating with certain muscles versus not having others engage from her accident, just from her body structure. And so with that in mind, um, Noticing, you know, her the difference in her hip strength, her wrist strength, um, her neck. I'm trying to strengthen um, these muscles on her, and um, so we kind of do a, a varied workout depending on what we think she needs. I focus a lot on her flexibility, her balance, strength, endurance. Um, you know. And so with that, she's made tremendous progress over the time frame that we worked together. She's an athlete at heart and um, has more persistence and motivation than many people <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's fun. We have a lot of fun together. And um, I feel like, I, Ruth, how old are you? I don't even know how old you are. 69, 68, tech, help. <laughs> I yeah, yeah for for late 60s um you know being skiing and doing all the activity and yard work and everything you do and being able to hold plank and do sit-ups and she pretty much has a, a lot of coordination for somebody that has a massive TBI and the recovery that she's made but I do know that some of her body parts are very tired and doing a lot of the work um, so I'm trying to get those others to activate and use the brain to really focus on, okay, this muscle's been down. What does it feel like? Let's talk to the brain to like get it to engage again. And we touch, we use sensory um, neurons and we speak out loud. And I really try to encourage her to speak positively to herself. And whereas progress might be slow, 
Um, and it's frustrating to kind of change the way we say that to each other. Um, I've also noticed in conversation, she just understands me a lot better as well as she starts to ask me about my life. She really enjoys having a part of the session be connection and conversation. And I didn't used to notice that before. So um, I'm hoping I'm giving kind of an overall, but that's, I, I feel like she's made a tremendous amount of progress in all areas. So, uh, that's awesome. Uh, can I just add one more thing? Uh, and then I guess this is for, for Susan and Sam. Um, we do this uh, uh, breathing exercise that's music led, uh, we're all based around our neck with different uh, motions up and down. And then the one that um, I think has been the, the most difficult for Ruth is the where you you kind of lay it to the side and uh, and that that's always been the, the most um, uh, painful, I guess, uh, tight and painful. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, you, I'm sure you guys are already aware of that, but uh, just from my perspective, what we do. Yes, thank you. Um, I've noticed that as well. And we are trying to work on, like I said, strengthening some of the more muscles around the neck so that she can give those others a break. Um, I've also noticed that her left wrist has progressively been painful. And I know it's swollen on me too, but this left thumb joint right here, Sam, I don't know. She said you've been working with her on that, but it makes it really hard to do any um, any strength building or yoga when she's having to put her hand down. So I had talked to Ted about it. He said he hadn't heard or complain about it, but um, I didn't know if anybody had any feedback on that, but it's something I've noticed that has been kind of getting in the way of our progress. Uh, okay, mute thingy. Um, yeah, so that's something that we've worked on kind of usually towards the end of sessions. Um, you know, I'll usually do, what we've been doing recently is I'll spend 30, 40 minutes, whatever is required to get through every single muscle in her neck. Um, and then we'll go and do kind of the more elaborate process I was talking about where I flip things off and on, um, get some of those patterns locked in and dialed in. And then with whatever time we have left, we'll she'll kind of walk around and let me know what wants a little bit more attention, whether it's thumb or foot or hip or something like that. Um, from the left thumb perspective, um, it seems to me that there's just probably some arthritic situations going on in the, uh, the like MTP joint where the, or the MCP where the metacarpal meets the first, uh, part of your thumb here, the first phalanx, um, and in the kind of, uh, carpal metacarpal joint, but which is not a huge problem. I mean, everybody's got arthritis in pretty much every joint in their body, unless they're 17 years old, it's just whether it's bad enough to where you feel it or not. Um, so I think there's some of that in there, which is where sometimes when that is a consideration or a possibility, um, I also did a lot of personal training back in San Diego. It's a part of what I do is kind of the strength side of things. I don't do it as much here because I don't have uh, machines and all the fun things that I used to do that yet. Um, but if there's an arthritic joint of some sort that restricts the range of motion, that range of motion in my book is something to kind of be worked around or to be respected, I guess, and kind of changing things, whether it's instead of hands on the floor, it's grabbing onto something this way that doesn't stress the, the joint itself. Because if there's bony osteophytic things in there that aren't allowing it to move in a certain way, then there's no amount of uh, anything aside from going in there and removing that stuff, it's going to get rid of it. So now it's just kind of something that needs to be worked with instead of, uh, or worked kind of around, I guess, instead of worked with. So what I try and do is get the muscles around that joint and the joints that are involved with that to do the best job that they can do in managing that joint. And when we get done with working on that kind of stuff, her thumb doesn't hurt anymore, or at least it seems like that most of the time. Um, I know yesterday, I saw her and we did what we normally do for a thumb and it was still kind of bugging her. And then we laid down and did a couple more things and then it wasn't hurting at all anymore. So if we get all the muscles governing the joint in the way that it's supposed to, and then the joint is uh, its range of motion based on the status of the joint surface is respected. If there's an arthritic surface in there, that seems to increase the longevity of how long that uh, feeling good lasts for, I guess. Uh, there's a little bit of that, I feel like, in her left hip as well, in terms of external rotation of her left hip. It doesn't feel like it's a soft kind of tissuey end feel when I move it. It feels a little bit more like a bony hard stop, um, which to me means that that range of motion might not be increasable. It might just be 
needs to be as good as it can be within what it can do without hitting into those bony osteophytic uh, arthritis spots. So in terms of the thumb, I definitely feel that compared to the other one. It just, it's a little bit more of a hard kind of like uh, running into a brick wall as opposed to a nice kind of cushiony soft tissue end feel, um, which sometimes when I say the word arthritis to people, it's like, a, oh my God, we've got arthritis of some sort, and, but we've, we've all got it to some extent, pretty much everywhere um, if we've been around for long enough. So in terms of the thumb, that's what I have to offer on that is I'm going to keep working on it and getting the muscles to work. And I've given Ruth a couple of things to try and mess around with exercise wise, maybe another memory test as if she remembers how to do those things at home. But, um, you know, I've given her a couple of things to try and reinforce some of the stuff that we're doing. And it seems like overall, from what I'm hearing from her, it's getting better overall. It's there is a relationship between how much work she does with it, yard work, things like that, and how it feels. Um, but better overall, but there's still issues that reside in there. So it might be something to do with if there's positions where she gets into and she can feel it, maybe can we do this or can we keep the thumb out this way or can we have padding and stuff like that's all I have to kind of. Yeah, I've tried that. Um, my only concern is she, was, she says there's sharp pains that radiate, radiate up her wrist. So I didn't know that that. I didn't oh, know. I haven't heard that one. So um, I don't know when, anyway. when that may have been, but um, I haven't heard that one. She usually just talks about kind of those two little thumb joints in here being the, the problem. She'll poke around and find usually the same spots. Um and I do work on when it comes to like, if I'm working on the thumb, I'm not just working on the thumb, I'm working on everything in the wrist and the forearm and everything like that, because the muscles that move your thumb around, some of them attach above your wrist, some above your elbow. So they're, they're performing multiple motions. So if I can get all the muscles that do those motions to do their portion of the motion, then they, the muscles that move the thumb can be left with the right amount of other stuff to do and focus more on the thumb things. So I've worked on some of the stuff up and down there too, but I hadn't heard about the wrist portion. So. Okay. Okay, great. Um. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Or Ted, do you want to say anything before we have Ruth see if she wants to say something? It's slow. I'm just listening because it's slow. So talk yourself. OK. Um, so maybe we could talk just for a minute about just the game plan for this year, it seems to be, I don't know, kind of fun to summarize year after year, the progress that's made. But I, as far as, as I know, we're just keeping on with the same schedule. And is anyone else going to be added to the mix, Ted? Or you guys feel that she's getting all of her areas covered? It's really hard to say. Um... I mean, clearly, clearly you guys see that I see the same progress that you all do. Um, and knowing Ruth, as long as I've known her, I know that it's never enough. And she's, she, but she is, she is extremely diligent. I will say that. Yes, she is. She's a good student. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing the progress that, that she's been able to, to do. And it's, it's really all credits to you, Ruth, because um, you're kind of forging through unknown territory as far as I'm considered, and it's such a good case study for others. Too bad we don't have a way to market this, like show people what can be done. <laughs> yeah, it's been how many, over 10 years since the accident, right? So, I mean, from what I what little I know about brain injuries, there's a lot of uh, kind of hard dates put on things of, you know, this is about how long people can progress for and stuff like that. But I feel like this situation is a very good illustration of the fact that uh, that, that can often be a self-fulfilling prophecy and people stop progressing because they stop trying. And if people keep trying, they can keep progressing. And uh, one of the, I like words and quotes and things. If you guys want to know one thing about me, it's that. Um, but um, you know, it matters not in life where we stand or sit, but in what direction we're moving. So as long as we're moving in the right direction and continue to make forward progress, then um, that's what we can hope for, I guess, and keep on pushing through with it. So as far as what I, my portion of, I guess, what this year is has in store is I've only been here for about six months with Ruth. So I still have more tricks in my bag and more progress that we can continue to make with that. And as she increases her level of activity and her level of exercise and her amount of singing she's doing and all these things, that's a level of a new level of tolerance that those muscles and the connections between the nervous system and the muscles need to make. So I'm always just kind of topping that up and making sure that it can tolerate those things. So 
from my perspective, while I'm going to be progressing her within here in some ways, I'm kind of, I look at myself in this situation and within this team as kind of putting her back together if some of the stuff that she does either in isolation or in combination exceeds some tolerance levels so she can stay on that forward path to progress instead of plateauing or uh, sliding backwards at all. Um, so I still am relatively new to the team and everything. So um, that's what my plan is for the year, I guess, in terms of what I um, have to offer is just kind of more of the same because it's still relatively new to the whole process. Well, welcome to the team, Sam. Okay, well, uh, uh, one last okay. thing for me is that, uh, uh, you know, we all, I think we've all heard Ruth say it's slow and, and um, you know, she, she kind of downplays uh, the, the progress sometimes. And I always think that, that, you know, sometimes that's all we focus on is just making sure that she realizes from my perspective, I'll speak for me, that there has been huge progress. Uh, mm -hmm. In, in so many ways that, and we have to make sure that we keep uh, recognizing that rather than, uh, you know, thinking that that everything is too small and it's and it's going too slow. That that actually, where you are now compared to four years ago, five years ago, is a very 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 different place. Mm -hmm. Yes, I actually get stopped by people on the street saying, "Oh my gosh, Ruth has made so much progress," and I'm like, "Well, it's all to." to a lot of things, but mostly her credit. So thank you all for all the contributions that you've made. It's really impressive. And I think it's just so rich, the, the avenues that she's chosen to combine together, you know, music, speech, self-care, mind, body, supplements, working out. It's, um, it's just the, the right path that she kind of put together. Thank you. Okay, well, I guess if no one else has anything to add, anybody, anybody? I'll go ahead and stop the recording. And um, I will just email this to all of you so that you have it for your reference if you'd like. Thank you, Susan.